Hello everyone, today I'm going to present our work evaluating machine learning workloads on memory-centric computing systems. This work was presented at this past 2023. Let's start with a brief executive summary. Machine learning training is computationally expensive and frequently memory-bound due to repeatedly accessing large training data sets. Memory-centric computing systems, which are systems with processing and memory capabilities, can alleviate this data movement bottleneck. Real-world PIN systems are becoming a reality with the advent of AppMem and also prototypes from Samsung, SK Hynix, and Alibaba. Our goal is to understand the potential of modern general-purpose processing in memory architectures to accelerate machine learning training. And our contributions are the PIN implementation of several classic machine learning algorithms, linear regression, logistic regression, decision tree, and k-means clustering, their workload characterization in terms of quality, performance, and scaling, and the comparison to their counterpart implementations on CPU and GPU. Uh, the beam version of the decision tree is 25 times and 1.34 times faster than the CPU and the GPU versions, respectively, and the beam version of k-means is 2.8 and 3.2 times faster than the CPU and the GPU versions. Our source code is publicly available, and we perform our experimental evaluation on a real-world processing in memory system with more than 2,500 cores. Uh, outcomes of our work are key observations, takeaways, and recommendations for ML workloads on general-purpose PIN systems. This is the outline. We will first provide some background on machine learning workloads and processing in memory. Then we will discuss the PIN implementation of ML workloads, and finally, we will go to the evaluation. First, quality metrics, then analysis of PIM kernels, um, next, uh, performance scaling, and finally, the comparison to CPU and GPU. So let's uh, start from the beginning. Machine learning training requires large amounts of data, and due to that, and because of the fact that it needs many um, iterations, is a computationally expensive process. It requires frequent data movement between memory and the processing elements to access training data, and the amount of computation is usually not enough to amortize the cost of moving the training data due to low arithmetic intensity, low temporal locality, or irregular memory accesses. Our goal in this work is to study and analyze how real-world general purpose PIM can accelerate ML training. Uh, to do so, we implement four ML uh, representative ML algorithms, linear regression, logistic regression, decision tree, and k-means that uh, show to be uh, memory bound when um, analyzing them with the roofline model because they fall in the memory bound area of the roofline. So they are good candidates for processing in memory. Processing in memory is a paradigm that advocates for memory-centric computing systems where processing elements are placed near or inside the memory arrays. PIM architectures are becoming a reality with AppMem and prototypes from Samsung, SK Hynix, and Alibaba. All these PIM systems have some common characteristics. First, there is a host processor, a CPU or a GPU with access to a standard main memory and PIM-enabled memory. Second, PIM-enabled memory contains multiple PIM processing elements with high bandwidth and low latency memory access. Third, the processing elements run at only a few hundred megahertz and have a small number of registers, uh, caches, or scratch pads. And finally, the PIMPs need to communicate or may need to communicate via the host processor. This is how a state-of-the-art PIM system looks. You can identify the standard main memory, the host processor, and the PIM-enabled memory, containing memory arrays and nearby PIM processing elements. In our work, we use the admin PIM architecture, where the processing elements are general-purpose processing cores called DRAM processing units or DPUs. They are fine-grained multi-thread cores that can run up to 24 PIM threads called tasklets, and they support 32-bit integral arithmetic, but multiplication and division are emulating, emulated as well as floating point operations. Each DPU has access to its own DRAM bank called MRAM and its own scratchpad called WRAM. This is how the uh, admin system with more than 2,500 DPUs looks like. This is the, the dual socket uh, host processor. These are the DRAM teams and these are the PIM enabled teams. So now let's discuss the PIM implementation of ML workloads. Um, remember that we are targeting four widely used machine learning workloads, and they are diverse in terms of uh, memory access patterns, operations and data types, and communication and synchronization needs. Let's uh, start with uh, linear regression, which is a supervised learning algorithm where the output has a linear relation with the input. In our work, we use gradient descent as the optimization algorithm, and our PIN implementation basically divides the training's data set equally among PIN cores, and inside each PIN core, PIN threads compute dot products of row vectors and weights. 
the dot product result is compared to an observed value to generate a partial gradient value. And these partial gradient values are then reduced and sent to the host. We generate four versions of the linear regression. The first one uses training data sets of 32-bit floating point numbers. The second one uses fixed point representation. The third one uses hybrid precision from eight bits to 32 bits. And the last one uses a custom multiplication that is based on the eight bit built-in multiplication that the DPUs feature. Logistic regression is also a supervised learning algorithm used for classification. In our work, we use sigmoid as the activation function. And in our implementation, we basically do the same workload distribution and in, as uh, the linear regression implementation. We generate six versions of log. The first one uh, with 32-bit uh, floating point numbers and sigmoid is approximated with Taylor series. The second one uses fixed point representation. The third one replaces the approximation with Taylor series with a calculation using a lookup table. And this lookup table might be in MRAM, which is the DRAM bank, or WRAM, which is the scratch pad. And we also have a hybrid version. And we also have a version that uses the custom multiplication. Next, we have the decision tree, a tree-based method used for classification and regression that partitions a feature space into leaves. In our PIN implementation, we distribute the training sets uh, over the PIN cores, and these PIN cores execute commands sent by the host processor, such as a split commit to split a, a tree leaf, a split evaluate to evaluate a split, or min max to query the minimum and maximum values of a feature in a tree leaf. Uh, the data layout is especially important in this uh, workload um, and in the split commit, we uh, write data in a way that we can maximize memory bandwidth with the streaming memory accesses. And this way we can also enjoy in streaming, streaming memory accesses um, in the split evaluate operation. <clears throat> K-means clustering is an iterative clustering method used to find groups in a data set. Uh, in our PIN implementation, we distribute the uh, data set evenly over the PIN cores, and the PIN threads evaluate what's the centroid that is the closest one to each point in the data uh, training set. Uh, to do so, we have a counter, an accumulator per coordinate and per centroid, and um, using them, the host recalculates the centroids. The convergence happens when the updated centroid coordinates are within a threshold. Now let's take a look at the evaluation. In our evaluation methodology, we have used synthetic data sets to, uh, for the performance scaling analysis and real data sets for the comparison to CPU and GPU. Uh, in our evaluated systems, the PIM system with more than 2,500 PIM cores, an Intel Xeon CPU, and an NVIDIA A100 GPU. We evaluate quality metrics, performance of PIM kernels, performance scaling, and comparison to CPU and GPU. This is the PIM system that we have used. Now let's take a look at the quality metrics. The quality metrics for linear regression, we pretty much see that the training error rate of the FP32 version is the same as the CPU version. And for the integer versions, it remains low and close to that of the floating point version. Similar trends we observe with linear regression. It is especially interesting that the loot-based versions obtain lower training error rates than the versions that use approximation because the uh, loots uh, include, uh, contain exact values. Decision tree shows a training accuracy that is only slightly lower than that of the CPU version. And a similar thing we observe for K-means clustering, for the quality metrics of K-means clustering. So in summary, we maintain the accuracy of all workloads or keep it close to that of the CPU baseline. Now let's take a look at the analysis of PIM kernels. First, linear regression. One observation is that all versions of linear regression saturate at 11 or more tasklets. And this is a number that is related to the number of pipeline stages of the PIM cores that we have used. We will go back to this uh, observation later. Uh, we can also observe that the fixed point representation accelerates the kernel by an order of magnitude over the FP32 version. And this is because FP32 is not natively supported. And as a result, and this is our first key takeaway, go workloads with arithmetic operations or data types that are not natively supported by the PIN cores run at low performance due to the instruction emulation. So our recommendation is that whenever possible, and if there is not much accuracy loss, we should use fixed point representation if point is now supported. Another observation is that the hybrid version of linear regression is 41% faster than the Integer32 version. And a recommendation that stems out of this is that quantization and hybrid precision are um, can significantly improve performance because they take advantage of native hardware support. 
the version that uses custom multiplication provides an additional 25% improvement. And a recommendation here is that we can optimize code by leveraging the native instructions as we did with the 8-bit uh, integer multiplication in AppMem. For logistic regression, the first observation is that the kernel time is very high for the 32-bit floating point and the 32-bit integer versions uh, due to the sigmoid approximation. But with the lookup tables, we can significantly accelerate the performance 53 times for the first of these uh, lookup table versions. So our recommendation is that we can convert um, memory accesses. So we can convert computation to memory accesses by keeping pre-calculated results in memory using lookup tables or memoization. We also, observe, we also observe that the hybrid version is 28% faster, and uh, the built-in version, uh, the, the custom multiplication version, uh, provides an additional 43% speed up. Uh, a general observation over all these workloads, including uh, decision tree and k-means, is that the throughput saturation points or the performance saturation points happens at 11 or more tasklets. And this is because, as I said, is related to the number of pipeline stages. And in the admin PIM architecture, this means that the pipeline latency hides the memory latency. So as a result, uh, these kernels are compute bound on the admin PIM architecture. So the takeaway from this is that ML workloads that are memory bound due to lower arithmetic intensity in CPUs and GPUs become compute bound when running on PIM. So our recommendation is to maximize the utilization of PIM cores by keeping their pipeline fully busy. Now let's take a look at this performance scaling results. We perform strong scaling and also weak scaling analysis of uh, these different kernels. And one general observation is that the PIM kernel time scales linearly with the number of PIM cores. Another observation is that there is very little overhead from data movement, either between PIM cores or between the host and the PIM cores. So a key takeaway here is that machine learning training workloads, which need large, large training data sets, can benefit from large memory, PIM-enabled memory with many PIM cores, even if the PIM cores need to communicate, because we have observed that the amount of data movement needed for intermediate results is tolerable. Finally, comparison to CPU and GPU. For linear re regression and logistic regression, we observe that the PIM versions are heavily burdened when they use operations that are not natively supported by the hardware. Or several optimizations reduce the execution time considerably, making them significantly faster than the CPU and also closing the gap with the GPU performance. For decision tree and for k-means, um, we observe that first, the decision tree, uh, the PIM version of decision tree is 25 times and 1.34 times faster than the GPU, uh, the CPU and the GPU version respectively. And the PIM version of K means is 2.8 and 3.2 times faster than the CPU and the GPU version respectively. In the extended version of our work in archive, we provide more evaluation results, including an analysis of decision tree and k-means with the Criteo one terabyte data set. One observation for the decision tree is that the speed up increases to 62 times uh, faster than the CPU and 4.5 times faster than the GPU version. And this is because with the previous data set, which is small, we were not obtaining the maximum performance with the maximum number of PIM cores. Now that we are using a larger data set, uh, we can use we, we can see that the best performance happens with the maximum number of PIM cores and the speed up increases. For k-means, the uh, speed up is similar to that of the previous data set for uh, the comparison to both CPU and GPU. So key takeaway number four is that ML workloads that mainly require operations natively supported by the PIM architecture, and that's the case of decision tree and k-means clustering, outperform the CPU and the GPU counterparts. Remember that you can find many more details in or the long archive version. And uh, remember as well that our call is uh, publicly available, is open source, and the repo is uh, ready for you to access. Uh, let's conclude with the executive summary. We have worked with the uh, training of machine learning uh, algorithms, which is uh, frequently memory bound due to accessing large training data sets. Memory centric computing systems can alleviate this bottleneck and uh, real pin systems are becoming a reality. We um, have um, analyzed machine learning workloads on a memory centric computing system in order to understand the potential of general purpose PIM for uh, ML workloads. Our main contributions are the PIM implementation of classic machine learning algorithms, workload characterization, 
and comparison to CPU and GPU, and we release our code and perform an uh, experimental evaluation on a real pin system with more than 2,500 uh, pin cores. Outcomes of our work are key observations, takeaways, and recommendations that can be useful for software developers and also for hardware and architecture designers or future PIN systems. If you are more interested in processing in memory, you are invited to attend the PIN tutorial that we are organizing in ISCA this year. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found this uh, talk interesting. <laughs>